Terrell Reeves, ladies and gentlemen. True, true green New York Jets fans in the building. How does it feel, first of all, to be the first Nike football athlete in almost a decade to have his own Nike footwear, man? That must be crazy. Uh, it, it feels awesome, man. It really does. Uh, and it takes me back to, um, you know, buying Jays <laughs> when I was younger. Um, and it's just amazing. To, to be a part of uh, the Nike family and uh, actually be able to design my own shoe. When they came with me with the idea, you know, I looked at Cliff and, and those guys at Nike football in real life. So uh, it's just an awesome, uh, it's an awesome achievement. And, um, it, you know, it, it's really exciting. It really is just to go through this whole process and design a shoe. What was your favorite shoe coming up, though? Did, were you a Jordan head? The Tunes. Jordan Tunes, yeah. Classics. Yeah. Yes. yes. What was your involvement in the actual designing of the, the Zoom readers that you have on right now is available today? Actually, Peter, I was in, involved in uh, every step from, from start to the finish. Um, you know, uh, shout out to Kim Link, uh, one of the Nike designers. He designed uh, a couple of LeBron James shoes as well. Um, but, you know, talking with him, we wanted to make a shoe um, that you can wear uh, with fashion. You can, you can work out in, and also you can play hoops in, because uh, I played a little hoops when I was in high school, so we just wanted to make an all-around shoe that uh, you can wear with anything. So what did you take, was there anything that you took from your own personal inspiration that kind of, who's, who's make, the things that have made you become the man that you are that you put into this shoe specifically? Yeah, Peter, um, you know, on the tongue, I got family. I think, um, you know, uh, how I grew up, and what I experienced in life with my family. Um, I had to shout them out on the shoe and put them in, uh, put them on the tongue. Uh, I got a saying, uh, it's the only way to handle pressure is to apply. Instead of feeling pressure, you apply. That's on the inside of the strap. Um, that's something, uh, you know, you kids, you know, if you go get the shoe, something, uh, just inspiration, something I'm not going through in my everyday life. I'm just applying pressure instead of uh, handling pressure. You know, that could be a lot of weight on your shoulders. And, and one thing you want to do is you want to attack that pressure instead of filling it. So uh, that's another thing. Uh, another, uh, another thing on the shoe was the flat wire. Um, and, we, and we took that concept of uh, it's a lot of bridges um, where I grew up at. And uh, it's another inspiration thing if you look at the flat wire. It's just something that, uh, you know, it's always bridges in your life like, that you have to cross. And um, I'm always crossing bridges in my life and in my career. So uh, if it's something you guys are going through, man, uh, cross that bridge, you know, don't get halfway and, and, and turn around uh, and, um, you know, just don't let nobody or anything in, in your life, you know, uh, make you turn around from that bridge, just keep on moving forward. But what's your style off the field, man? What type of gear do you wear off the field? Uh, I'm in the fashion, so really, I, <laughs> I just got some leather sweatpants the other day. That doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> Leather sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm not gonna ask how much you paid for leather sweatpants. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're anything. There's not, there's not like a particular style that defines you. You're kind of all over the map with the styles. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of everywhere. I think, um, you know, I always look for different things. Being different. I mean, don't, you know, make your own trend. Set your own trend. That's, that's what I think. You know, everybody, you know, people ask me about my bees that I got on my horn. Where did you get them from? I'm like, dude, they're $5. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, yeah, but, you know, somebody else might think it's $200 or whatever, but just find your own trend, man. Do, do what you want to do and, and how you want to be perceived as a person. What is the ultimate advice you would give these guys trying to make it as football players? What's the, what's, what's the key words you would give them? Um, you know, one, I'll say, work on your technique, man. Um, you know, playing in the NFL, man, it's, it's a lot of great players. And uh, every Sunday, you can't, you can't take them lightly. Not, not one of them. Not the third string wide receiver, not the fourth string. Uh, they're all professionals. They all work their way up to, to get there uh, as well. So I say, one, man, work on the little things, technique. You, you, you're an offensive lineman? 
Hey, work with them hands. <laughs> work with them hands and feet. It, that, that'd be a good thing for you to work on. You, you get that stuff uh, down now, uh, where it's second nature to you. Uh, sky's the limit for you, you know. And stay out of trouble, boy. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, th just those simple things, man. You know, keep your nose clean. Uh, work on your technique, man. And, and, and listen to your coaches. Really, really do. Um, they can help you. I had some great coaches coming up who I really listened to. And then, you know, when you're watching, you know, the Jets or, or any other NFL games, like, look. Look at how the players play. Like, look at their technique. What are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? When they brag about Tom Brady throwing a touchdown pass and they, re they show the replay, look at how he's the you know, quarterbacks out here, or, or look at your position. If he's doing, you know, they're bragging now he's throwing his power the right way. I mean, usually he's he's doing the right technique. So focus on those things. Uh, you know, when you guys, uh, you know, you know, watching this play out there. So I'll leave you guys with that. Uh, what's it like to be a part of playing professional sports in this environment? The New York City Tri-State area is, is special. So what, what's it like being a part of that? Um, let me tell you a little story. <laughs> you know, my uncle played uh, 12 years in the NFL. And, um, me, when I first got, when I got drafted by the New York Jets, you know, he was so pumped because he was like, are you ready? You know, on the phone, like, are you ready? I'm like, ready for what? Are you ready for New York? I'm like, uh, whatever. I don't know. And and actually, when I got here, I kind of figured it out that um, this is the this, this this is the city of stars, man. You know I mean, everything happens in New York. Uh, the media market. Uh, you know, if you play big here, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of success for you. It's a lot of things you can get into uh, off the field, uh, business-wise, and things that you you enjoy. That you're enjoying your life that you want to get into, but um, it's also it is tough because I've been misquoted uh, a bunch of times <laughs> in the paper. But um, you, you know you you, you got to be stronger than that, and um, that's what they do. I mean the media sometimes switch things around, but the um, only thing you can do is just focus on your ball and that's playing ball and doing what you love to do. Is, worth, is it a worthwhile trade-off though? Because like this has been a great example year where it's like the media has been very tough on you guys. Your constant conversation. Is it a worthwhile trade-off to have to deal with that for the sort of opportunity and glory that you get in New York? Would you, do you think it's worthwhile? Uh, I, I think it is. You know, um, you know, I love to play for the Jets. Um, you know, I remember telling Tanner on phone when he drafted me. This is one of the best decisions you made. Um, because, you know, I had it in my heart, man. And whoever team is going to draft me, I'm going to try to do the best I can uh, to make this team win and get here as much as I can. But, um, you know, this, this, the situation that we're in right now, um, it, it happens. It's, it happens, man. It's for four seven, you know. And, um, you know, sometimes the media is looking for anything to, to tell you now. But one thing uh, I think we do do great is, I mean, we've, there's been some guys bombing, guys bombing, guys. But um, you know, really at the end of the day, um, you know, we had to clean that up and move forward. So, what do you? That's that's my next question. What do you think is the key to you guys turning things around and returning to the place that you've been the, the last couple of seasons? Uh, guys just need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Quick topic crazy to the media, man, especially, uh, you know, bombing your teammates. I, I think that's the worst because I think when you do that, that's where that's when it really gets divided because, you know, you don't know if your other team, if you can trust your other team. I mean, he's, he's basically simple. Peter, if I bomb you right now, you're going to look at me crazy. Probably <laughs> would. Yes, well, I, and I, I know because I live in an industry where we spend all yes. the time doing that stuff. <laughs> it feels crazy afterwards, that's for sure. All right, now we, we took some um, we took some questions earlier from the audience, and I have one here. I'm going to read the question, but I'd like him to stand up and ask. Where's George? George Scout. There he is. What up, George? What's up, man? All right, George. Uh, George wanted to know um, if you could explain your work ethic. What goes into Jarrell Revis's work ethic? Uh, wow, great question. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's a lot. I think more so it's a lot of mental that, that, that uh, I really think about. Um, you know, my work ethic is something with, 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 with is, uh, within you. It really is. Uh, I say one, one thing that I do think about is my mother. You know, that's what helps me with my work ethic. Uh, the way she worked three jobs, the way uh, we struggle coming up. So that's one of my motivations. That's one of my work that, that ethics that, uh, that I really keep dear to my heart. And when I'm out there working out, you know, sometimes, you know, I think about her and the struggle she went through. So, uh, you know, I just look at that as uh, she went struggle with more. So um, that's, that's how I, I work out and, and use that motivation. Um, yours could be the same. It could be something else uh, that you can, you can grab one to that you, that you love dearly um, that can help you uh, through working out in the work ethic. Dewan, you said, uh, what did it feel like to make it to the NFL? Is that right? What's the question? What did it feel like as a person just to make it to the NFL? Actually, I cried on, on, on draft day. I, I cried, man. Just, uh, me and my mom, I had to show them cried. And, um, we've been, you know, me and my mother have been through a lot. So um, I, remember, I remember telling her one time that, that she wouldn't have to work again if she doesn't. But, um, you know, I just remember those days, man. Um, and I think that's why I cried and just uh, working hard. Giovanni wanted to know, how has your life changed since you became an NFL player? Uh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it changed a lot. I, I say, uh, as soon as you get that first paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of responsibilities. You got a, a lot of bills. You only got three hundred dollars to your name. You gotta stretch that out for how long you can. So, one is uh, it's, it's a good living. Uh, two, man, um, it's a lot of pressure. It is. Um, this job is, is very tough, man. And, and the things we go through every day. Um, I think. It, I mean, if you, some of you guys know, you, some of you guys are football players. So, um, it's, it's really not different. In, in certain ways. One way is different because uh, I'm playing for a professional team, so if, you know, they run it like a Fortune 500 company. I mean, it's, it's all business. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of uh, sad that you can be friends uh, with somebody one day and the next day he's cut. So um, it, it's, it's really a business, but also um, it's still fun. You know, you still got to have fun with the game, and, and that's what I try to do. Um, it's, it's just really have fun. Not let um, distractions or pressure. When, when, I, when I told you guys about pressure earlier, man, uh, just just try to be positive as much as you can, and, um, and, and really just focus on your goal. I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I, I want to be the best at what I do, and, and I, I thought about that when I was looking at Deion Sanders, like I can be better than one day. Uh, I still got a lot of work to do, but. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm doing what I can uh, with my dreams and aspirations. Well, I, I don't know if you'll ever be a better baseball player than Dion. I'll be honest. No. <laughs> solid, solid lead off guy. See, around my way, we ain't played. Yeah, we ain't Basketball, played. though, you might. Bat? No. I don't know. He's actually pretty nice there, too. <laughs>